A word on reconciliation. As some of my colleagues know, reconciliation has been used 19 times since 1980, 14 of those times during a Republican administration. Reconciliation has been used to cut Medicaid, cut Medicare, and cut education during the Reagan years. Reconciliation has also been used to provide health insurance to millions of children through the S-CHIP program, to increase taxes on upper income people, and to enact welfare reform during the Clinton years. Reconciliation was also used by President George W. Bush to cut tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires, among other things, resulting in a $1.7 trillion increase in the deficit over a 10-year period. So my simple question is, if reconciliation is such a good idea in order to give tax breaks to billionaires, why is it such a bad idea to provide health care to all of our people or make this country energy independent? That's my question. Do I get to answer that? Well, we can talk about it any time you want to. And you were, as you know, Senator Gregg, voting for reconciliation for tax breaks for billionaires. But on the other hand, I guess you have a whole lot of problem when we use reconciliation to provide health care for all of our people. Last point that I would make, which many of my Republican friends have made over the years with regard to reconciliation, and it's a valid point. The point that they have made, and most people don't understand, you know, when we talk about moving this country forward, Mr. Chairman, if my memory is correct, in the last session, Republicans filibustered 95 times, is that right? Making us get 60 votes to pass anything. And I think when the Republicans had the majority, one of the points they made is, hey, it's hard to do anything to get 60 votes. Well, it was hard for you to do anything to get 60 votes. It's hard for us to do anything to get 60 votes. Last point. All of us who are elected officials, we go home. And all of us, I'm sure without exception, have heard our constituents say, you know, you guys run for office and you make all kinds of promises. Then when you get elected, you forget the promises that you made. Barack Obama is being roundly criticized. You know why? Because he is keeping the promises that he made to the American people during the campaign. This budget is a reflection of what he told the American people what he was going to do. And people are now criticizing him because he, in fact, is doing what he said he was going to do. So, Mr. President, I support Mr. Chairman. We haven't made you president yet, have we? Uh, I support uh, the Obama budget. Uh, I support the need for real health care reform and energy independence and making college education affordable to all of our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Did the Senator want to respond? Well, I don't want to carry out the debate too far, but I will just assimilate myself, associate myself with the remarks of Senator Byrd, which were quoted earlier on the issue of reconciliation relative to issues of public policy that are as broad and as deep as health care and carbon tax. Not think they're giving hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the wealthiest people in this country, increasing the deficit, not be a broad public policy? Well, I guess if you want to, I, I know that Senator Grassley wants to speak here, but I, I think there, I think maybe the Senator would want to go back and read Senator Byrd's summary of what reconciliation is for. Uh, reconciliation is supposed to be used in the budget process. It is legitimate to use it for the purposes of adjusting tax law, for the purposes of adjusting existing tax law, for the purposes of adjusting existing policy in the area of entitlements. Very legitimate. That's why I voted for it under the Clinton administration. But it is not appropriate to use reconciliation, which cuts off the role of the Senate in the process of developing policy on something as broad and as extensive as rewriting the health care laws of this country. Because basically, you do the health care laws of this country under 20 hours with no debate and an up or down vote, and you rewrite them all, then you might as well be the House of Representatives. Now, I know the Senator served in the House of Representatives, maybe enjoyed it more than he does the Senate. Oh, no, I love the Senate. I, I do not enjoy the House of Representatives' mm -hmm. approach to debate amendment and discussion. I think that's what makes us different. It's why I associate myself with Senator Byrd's Well, comments. let me just briefly respond, and, and I would conclude by saying, I think re what the function of reconciliation is, is in the eye of the beholder. 
No, it's not. I, well, I think Absolutely it is. Absolutely not. Uh, well, if you vote for tax breaks for billionaires and that's okay and you criticize us for trying to provide health care to all people, I think that's in Nobody's the eyes of Nobody's criticizing you for trying to provide health care to all people. In fact, we have a very aggressive program to do that on our side of the aisle. And we intend to do it. And we intend to do it in the, in, the, in the form of debate and amendment, which is what you need. Because we've got some ideas that may actually be constructive in this process. I know Senator Grassley does, because he's been a leader on this for a long time. And I don't think Senator Grassley or I or some people on your side want to have those ideas cut off by having no amendments in a 20-hour debate, up or down vote on the issue. It's just too big.